Okay. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's. Okay. Anyway, so hi guys, my name is Ashley. I'm a vet tech. I am officially certified. I got my certification in the mail, in the mail, in an email, in an email. Yeah, um, because I did it through Wisconsin, my certification came through in an email, like literally probably a week after um, I took the test. So, well, after I took the state test, I did the Bitney and then probably like either a couple days or like a week later, I took the state test. And then maybe like a week after that, they sent me the like, yeah, you passed and then here's your certificate. So I know a lot of people are actually waiting. Um, I'm in this like Facebook group with like a lot of people who are taking the Vitney and they're like, oh, I'm in California and I've been waiting a year. No, mm -mm, nope, it only took like a week. Anyway, beside the point, that's not what I'm making a video about. I'm a CBT now, yeah. Um, so I don't know, I, I still do want to make videos on like studying and stuff like that but that's I think that'll start back up once I get a job but today I think since either you've passed your Vitney at this time or maybe you're looking for a job or whatever I don't know I don't know what you're doing but uh, right now where I'm at is interviews working interviews and either accepting or denying job offers so today what I wanted to talk about was like some things that you should know before you go into a working interview pretty much a working interview for a day practice so um, number one first and foremost the most major thing that anybody could tell you and it sounds so cliche but be confident okay be confident in yourself because if you're not confident in yourself who else is gonna be confident for you not me I don't know you you have to do it for yourself. So whenever you're going to a, work, a working interview, make sure that you are confident, you know this stuff, you've studied this stuff. Even if you've you know, just come out of school and maybe you haven't had enough practice or maybe you haven't done these things in a long time and you're nervous or whatever, like just go in confident. Like, listen, like you've studied for this, you're going in there, this is a job that you want. And um, yes, it could be a little intimidating. Like, don't be intimidated by anyone. Don't be afraid of anyone. Um, so just go in there, be confident. Don't worry about what anybody's thinking. Do what you gotta do. Get the job, girl, okay? Or guy, or whoever, you know? We don't judge here. Um, the second thing, pretty much, this is like information that you should know. These are things that can be looked up, so they're look upable, but uh, it's something that you should kind of have a general idea. Of. These are all things that I was asked. Number one, parasite prevention. So heartworm prevention, flea prevention. Let me go. So for heartworm prevention, you can look up, you know, like those websites like Chewy.com, like whatever. Uh, I don't know what they're called, like pet, pet 1-800 pet meds or whatever. They're usually gonna have like, you can look up like heartworm medication or flea medication or whatever, and they're gonna give you a list and you're gonna see the brands. You're also gonna see the active ingredient and you're gonna see what they treat. Be aware of some of the brands, some of the more major brands. So when you go into your working interview, even though you haven't worked or maybe you haven't seen this in a long time, you'll have kind of an idea of what they're selling to their clients. So um, I'll give you some examples and I'll have them up on the thing. So Trifexis, Triheart, Sentinel, um, heart guard, what else? Interceptor. Yeah, so all of these do heartworms. They also do intestinal parasites, but they're all different. So just make sure that you're, you kind of know which does what. I honestly don't have this memorized. You know why? Because it's on the box. So if someone's gonna like be upset with me because I don't remember like off the top of my head, sorry, it's just not me. Um, I, I'll just go, I got my legs. I'll just go over there, pick up the box and look at it. And that's it okay so you want to make sure that you at least know that ivermectin can't be given to a specific breed of dogs now I'm gonna give you a few seconds you tell me what breed you think that is ivermectin should not be given to uh, sheep dogs or collies because of the MDR1 mutation that they have it can cause more severe effects when given in like even mild doses. So you don't really want to give, let's say, heart guard or 
try heart plus to a sheepdog. So just make sure you're aware of that before you go in. That's something really, really good to know. Flea prevention. You have next guard, Revecto for cats, Revolution. Mm, off the top of my head, what else? On here, I have it written down, <laughs> Frontline. So um, these are specifically for fleas and ticks. Um, Revolution does ear mites for cats. Revecto is given every three months. So just, I mean, I don't know if you really need to know all of that going in, but it doesn't hurt, so just know, so just try, try to remember. Those also have um, different active ingredients and it is good to know that once you're like in there and working, but it's not something that they're probably, I don't think anyone's gonna literally be like, hey, what's the active ingredient of Frontline? And if they are, like, ew, why you gotta be so picky? No. So the next one for the information that you should know um, is heartworm cycle. So you're not necessarily gonna know, need to know like the very specifics like L4, L3, you know, things like that. What they're most likely gonna ask you is what is the pre paint period of the heartworms or when do you test for heartworms. I actually had an interview, um, a working interview, and the girl was very like aggressive kind of like with the way she was coming at me with questions. But at the end of the day, whatever, it doesn't matter because I know what I'm doing, right? So um, she was like, oh, what's the heartworm cycle? And I was like, well, do you want to know the whole cycle? Because I don't remember the numbers, but I could tell you like what happens. Um, or do you want to know when do you test? And she was like, when do you test? And I was like, okay, you test around six months, if I remember correctly, in my little noggin. And she's like, we test a, in a year. And it's like, okay, now, this is when you need to be confident and comfortable in telling that person who's interviewing you or doing a working interview that they, that in a sense they are correct, but at the same time, the question that they asked you was a little unfair. So when she asked me, when do you test? That is relative. It's relative based on what animal hospital you're working at. The hospital that I worked at when I worked day practice, which was in 2014, a long time ago, we did at six months and then again at like, I think maybe either three months or at a year again, just to make sure that they're not. You know why? Because it takes six months to nine months, that is the pre paint period, for the adult worms to mature where when testing, the antigen will show up on that on that test, which will say positive or negative, right? So when she asked me, when do you test? And she says, well, we test in a year. And it's like, okay, that's good. Like, I'm glad that you're telling me about what your hospital does specifically. But if you're asking me what the pre paint period is, I'm gonna tell you it's six to nine months. Anyway, so um, what are you supposed to test? At six months. If they say nine months, say yes. The pre paint period is from six to nine months. Next would be vaccines. So know the vaccine schedule, know core vaccines versus non core vaccines for at least cats and dogs because this is day practice. I'm not talking about large animal exotics, stuff like that, because that would be way too long of a video. Um, what you should at least know is rabies, canine distemper, parvovirus, adenovirus, para influenza, plus or minus. And um, those are all core vaccines. So the rabies can be given once at 12 weeks. The other one, so adenovirus, parvo, parainfluenza, canine distemper, can be given in a combo. And those are given starting at six weeks, yeah, and given up to 16 weeks. That's also relative on where you work, um, depending on the doctor, what they think, or what they've researched, but up to 16 weeks at a two to four week interval and um, those are given sub-Q. The reason I say par um, parainfluenza plus or minus is because it can be given with the Bordetella vaccine, but the Bordetella is a non-core vaccine. Bordetella and canine parainfluenza virus is can be given in the nose and at a single dose. It, there's no, from what I looked up, there's no reason to give it every six months. I think it works I'll show you the information, pretty much you can look it up, you can read it, but it says on there, on the AHA protocol, that there's no reason to give it every six months. Bordetella only can be given sub-Q, IN, by mouth, 
sub-Q at two doses, two to four week interval. Then you have Lepto, Lyme, uh, CIV, and a Western Diamondback um, vaccine that can be given at two to four week intervals for two doses. So one dose, two to four weeks, and then another dose. So that's for dogs. For cats, what you're gonna have for the core vaccines is FPV, FHV1, and FCV. This is kind of mind blowing to me because whenever I worked in the clinic, FELV, FIV, and rabies were the ones that we recommended for our owners to give to their pets, but they're not core vaccines. So that was a little confusing to me. If you have any insight on that, you let me know in the comments, okay? Um, and then we have Bordetella, FIP, like I said, FELV, FIV, and Chlamydiophila, Felis, it, those are non-core vaccines, okay? You should know ranges. So temperature, pulse, respiration, blood pressure, mucous membranes, and um, people say, uh, Canadians, don't they say capillary? Capillary refill time? So um, the CRT. So for the temperature for cats is 100.5, sorry, to 102.5, and dogs is 102.5 to 103.8. I feel like that's still a little bit high, but I think this like in a clinical setting where they're like, ooh, stressed out, like you wouldn't be really super, super, super concerned if it was 103. You also just want to make sure that you tell your doctor <laughs> that they're up that high. Um, pulse for cats, 120 to um, 140. I have seen it higher than that. When cats are really stressed, their heart rates can like shoot up. Um, dogs, 70 to 120. Um, although there are, are some dogs that are just very, very relaxed and their heart rates are lower than that. So just be aware there could be, you know, those um, animals that are on the opposite set sides of the spectrum um, and it's just their personality but as long as you write that down you take that down you should be good respiratory rate cats 16 to 40 breaths per minute and um, for dogs 18 to 34 breaths per minute I keep looking outside because my windows open and there's always people like walking in and out and like talking out loud and I feel awkward because I'm talking really loud and I'm sure they can hear me anyway let's keep going so for blood pressure I was actually asked to do I was asked to do a TPR CRT well not CRT they just asked me to do a TPR and then there was a situation where they were doing a surgery and the <clears throat> when I say they, this, these are multiple, I'm putting like multiple different working interviews like into one situation just to make it easier for me to explain, but multiple situations, multiple different working interviews. Um, there was one working interview where I was like in a surgery type of situation and the blood pressure of the dog was like really low. So we had to take blood pressure using a Doppler. If you don't know how to use a Doppler, it's really the same thing as using like the ECG machine. You still use the um, the cuff. You plug in the Doppler, the little pump, and um, what you'll do is you it has like a little crystal with a line. Make sure it's off. It's like a little radio situation. You know what? This is too hard to explain. Like without me actually showing you because I'm not really super good with words, but pretty much you put the little crystal on their, these part and um, you find the pulse. Once you find the pulse, you fill up the pump and then you release the pump until it reaches the, where you can hear their pulse again. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And then whatever it lands on, you do it a few more times just to get the either average or the mean. <clears throat> Anyway, I had to say, right? I had to go eat something. We're back. Okay, so what was I saying? So you should know the ranges of that. And so you have systolic blood pressure in dogs goes from 90 to 140. Um, so you could say like around 120 um, is good. And then for cats is 80 to 140 as well. So also around 120. And diastolic pressure is 50 to 80 and then in dogs and 55 to 75 in cats so generally we think of it as 120 over 60 120 over 60 these are like the middle like instead of knowing the ranges you can know like middle and then um from there you know if it's like a little higher or a little low or whatever so the difference between systolic and diastolic is systolic um blood pressure is the higher number right so 120 and this is going to be when your heart is 
um, pumping, right? So blood pressure is just how much pressure is the blood putting on the arteries of like through your body. And when you're taking that blood pressure, Systolic is the squeezing, when the heart is squeezing, so it's pumping out, squeeze, systolic SS. And diastolic is when the heart is relaxed. So when the heart is not pumping, you still have blood in there, it's still creating pressure, but it's not as much as when the heart is pumping more blood through. And the way that I remember that, like I said, systolic um, squeeze and diastolic die. So when you're dying, you're not putting pressure I don't know, okay? I just, this is how I remember things. Um, and then for mucous membranes, you're gonna wanna have pink, moist mucous membranes. If they're gray, if they're um, tacky, if, you know, it's not pink and moist, then there's a problem and you just wanna notate the normal and the abnormal, okay? And then capillary refill time or capillary, capillary refill time is gonna be less than two seconds. That's what you're gonna want it at. So what you're gonna do is press down. One, two, am I dying? Okay, we're good. You're in a working interview and this dog comes in and they want you to do a TPR on it. Are you just gonna go, hello dog? You know, no, you're not gonna just grab the dog and stick thermometer up its butt, okay? You're not gonna wanna do that. You're gonna want to <laughs> get a little bit of information first. Every time I took a TPR, I always get a CRT and I always get a femoral pulse at the same time because it's our responsibility as vet techs to do the primary physical exam. We're not doctors, no. We're um, not gonna diagnose or anything, no. But we could always catch something that maybe the doctor didn't catch or maybe a dog was barking and when they were doing the physical and they missed something and we can say, well, this was not the same when I did it versus when you did it, so what do you think? You know, it's a conversation, you guys are a team. It's your responsibility to do the first physical exam on this dog, so Take it seriously. So, okay, yeah, I'm comfortable doing that. What's the dog's name? What's it here for? What's kind of like around? So the technician should be like, this is Nestle, a one-year-old neutered male, and he's here for just a checkup post-neuter. That's it, okay? So um, you know he has sutures. Um, they didn't mention anything about it being mean or aggressive or anything like that. Okay, cool. So this should be a relatively healthy dog. Nothing should be going on as far as like heart rate or anything. So I already have my mind on what I'm doing. Okay, next. Look at the dog. Is it dying? Is it in pain? Is it stressed out? Is it scared? No? Okay, move on. So now what you're gonna do is get your hand, put it over the like the like pulse. Then you're gonna get your, your stethoscope and you're gonna put it on that part. Then you get the femoral pulse at the same time. And you listen, and you listen, and you feel. Are they synchronous? Yes, okay, so you know that, it's good. Are, um, so then you, forever, for however long, right? So I do it for, I don't know, you probably shouldn't do it like this, not really like super accurate. But um, you do it for six seconds and then you add a zero or you can do it for 15 and you multiply it by four or whatever. Whatever you want, as long as you get a decent number. Okay. And um, once you get that, you're already there. So feel for the respiratory rate. Okay, write it down. Then I do the CRT and the mucous membranes at the same time because I'm not gonna be like sticking my fingers in their mouth um, forever. So. Write it down. Blood pressure, you're not gonna have to do a blood pressure unless you're in a weird situation like I was, but just be aware. It could happen. Practice on your pets. If you wanna be a vet tech, you probably already have like 10 animals in your house, so just like practice. Um, and then next, let's go to the next one. Uh, basic drugs. So when I was doing a working interview, they didn't really have very many um, rooms. What the girl had me do, she was like, oh, can you, uh, are you, familiar with any of these drugs like up on in the pharmacy and I was like yeah and she was like okay well can you tell me some so then I literally went through like almost all of the medication and told her what like it's generally used for so 
Usually they're alphabetical, so just be aware that you maybe ask that. I'm not sure they'll be like super like, why don't you know this? Unless you are a CVT, then you should really kind of know like general um, medication. So I'll go over some. So anthelmetics like uh, pyrantol, fenbendazole, metronidazole, uh, praziquantel, and then NSAIDs like carprofen or imidil, meloxicam, medicam, and steroids like prednisone and dexamethasone. You should act, like know these are very common, you know? For antibiotics, like I'll just go off the top of my head, like cephalexin, um, clavamox, doxycycline, <laughs> antibiotics like that. You should, um, you should know like that they are, like what they are. Um, I don't think they'll be like super upset if you don't know exactly what they're used for. I know there were some heart medications up on that shelf too that I knew, but don't stress too much about that one. And then drug calculations. I'll link um, my video that I did w with my husband um, of drug calculations that you guys can go over some of those. But generally what you're gonna do in a day practice is just do like pounds to kegs and then from kegs to migs to mils. So like how many mils of this medication will you give this dog if the dog is like 50 pounds and the concentration is 10 mix per mil, whatever. You get the point, it's gonna be very simple. I don't think I'm gonna do like a whole thing because you guys like should know how to do that already. Um, if you don't, leave me a comment and then I can just do like another video with just like simple calculations, but we're not gonna get into that now. IV placements. So make sure you know needle sizes, um, the tapes that you're gonna be using, using, and anatomy is your friend. Those are the three things that I'll tell you like, anatomy is your friend. If you cannot see that vein because maybe they pre-medded it, or maybe it's dehydrated, or maybe whatever the case, you know where that vein is supposed to be, so poke there, okay? Anatomy is your friend. Um, so there is also a link that I found that actually gives you like step-by-step -step instructions on how to place a catheter. I know some people are more like visual and that's why they're on YouTube or maybe like you like to hear stuff, but this one, it does give you pictures and it's like very short description. So it's not really like super in detail or anything, but at least it gives you like a better idea of how to place an IV catheter. Also, you can watch um, On the Floor at Dove for IV placement um, and then like jugular, um, cephalic or saphenous, yeah, sticks. So those are the last kind of things. So make sure you're comfortable with your IV placement, your um, jugular sticks, your cephalic sticks, and your saphenous sticks, and also restraints. So for restraints, you're going to want to do kind of like less is more, okay? And then if you are not comfortable holding because this dog seems aggressive, like speak up. Don't put yourself at risk for anybody. They do not care. They will not pay for your care. You know, if you get bit and um, they will not hire you if you get somebody bit. So just make sure that you're comfortable and confident in holding, okay? Like I said, you probably have like 10 animals in your house. Just practice with them. And then the last thing I'm gonna go over is cytology. So these are really, important if you're trying to go for like a CVT position more like you're not going in as like a vet assistant you're going in to get paid a little bit more money um so make sure you're comfortable reading ears fecals and urine 100 percent. so um be able to for the fecals tell hookworms whipworms tapeworms occasionally i don't never seen a tapeworm on a slide because they're usually too heavy and they sink down to the bottom make sure you know how to do those procedures so go over them with your notes there's nowhere that i can actually show you right now because i'm not i'm not currently working at a day practice there's no way that i can physically show you how to do the procedures but once i do start working with that kind of stuff i will try to make videos for you guys to see but I know on the floor at Dove, and I keep saying that, they have really good videos um, of how to do certain procedures, like some, certain simple procedures like that. Make sure you know how to identify worms. For ears, you should know how to identify yeast. They look like little footprints or like little peanuts. Rods, they look like, what do they look like to me? Oh, 
the expo markers, when you put them back to back to back to back like that, um, that's what they look like. They're always gonna be kind of like in a line. And then cocci, those look like little pencil dots. Okay, make sure you know how to identify those. And then last but not least is urine. So make sure you know how to identify at least these crystals. There is a really good site, um, Clinician's Brief is where I got these from. And look it up, so Clinician's Brief, your analysis and you can see all these different types of pictures and I have them on here red blood cells white blood cells like um, struvite what is it calcium oxalate um, calcium carbonate yeah bilirubin and cysteine ammonium bi biurate those are the different ones that I have up here for you to see I'll let you know how I remember them maybe it'll help you remember their names but so struvite um, Strew is dead, so he's in a coffin, and struvites look like coffins to me. Calcium oxalate, ox, ox, ox box, they look like boxes, and then with the X inside for O, X, X, I don't know. <laughs> um, bilirubin, they're just, bilirubin B for brown, they, they're just like brownish to me. Cysteine, sounds like 16, and 16 has six, and they have six sides. I wish I had something better for you guys to remember these by but yeah that's how I remember them and so yeah that's kind of like a quick rundown of the things that I was definitely asked to do all the places that I um, went on working interviews for I have gotten the job but I have turned down a few because I want a specific job and that's another story for another day but Anyway, like I said, make sure you're confident. Don't be cocky. Don't be rude. Okay? Don't be rude. Don't be mean. Don't be stuck up. Don't act like you know everything. Because you know what? There's a lot of drama and a lot of stuff that goes on in vet hospitals. And if you rub somebody the wrong way, that could be it for you. Okay? So I will make more videos hopefully soon i don't know it's taking me a long time because i'm really really trying to get these jobs that's it for today if you really need to learn something else or if you have any questions or like you just want to write a comment or like or whatever go ahead and do that i'm here i answer everyone's comments as fast as i can i will see you next time bye